Hello everyone, it's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I never do this alone. I have the ladies with me. Good morning, ladies. Excellent Good morning, morning Morayo. How are you guys doing today? Amazing. How was your weekend, Tokwe? Um, it was a very, very busy weekend. Okay. Um, but I'm grateful to God for life. So I had a major chest infection. <gasps> oh. And you're coughing this morning. As oh. in, I felt like I was going to die oh. on mm. Saturday. Because I was in Mayan that I was I had to do steam, um, I had to steam uh, my face okay. twice and I could barely breathe. Like mm. my chest was clogged, you know. So I'm grateful. I've never had such before, ever. So it was really, really strange to be coughing like that. But right. I'm I'm happy to be here. I'm not coughing at the moment. Have you seen the doctor? No. If I cough during the show, forgive me, but so um, I'm yeah. thankful to God for life. <laughs> Which is very yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't eventually. No, 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 no. okay. went to see one. I'm amazing and grateful for life. Um, How are you bonding with your daughter? Oh, she's going back to school. She's here in the studio yeah. with me. <laughs> so um, Saturday, I was home all through the weekend. You know, I told you guys I would likely go out or I'll <laughs> stay home and rest and... I woke up really late, like about 10 a.m. I knew that my body needed to rest. Right. So my son had been insisting that we have family time, family time. I was like, what does this family time mean? <laughs> and he says, we have to play games together. I have to play a snake and ladder, chess, and one boy. cup game stuff. Finally, we had the family time. It was Ooh. so much fun. Ah. Daddy was rolling on the floor <laughs> laughing. The kids <laughs> were so excited. And I'm like, okay. I think we have to do this every weekend. Yeah, yeah it just brings nice. so much bonding. I have oh, fun. Fantastic. I have fun. That's a good idea. Yeah. Consider doing that. How are you doing, Mariam? Fine. So on Friday, I got a call. Can you meet me up on the island for a date? That was my husband. Oh, <laughs> I had to say it that way. <laughs> so I went out, but man, I'm an old woman. Uh, I mean, halfway through, I was sleepy and oh, yawning. I just God. wanted to go home. Oh, it was God. just like, you're, you're a bush woman. I'm like, yes, yeah, I just need to go home and rest. And then Saturday, uh, I would say she dragged me. Tokwe ah, dragged me out ah. to the, but it was fun, the Edu Fair. Okay. They, uh, Edu organized 360. Edu 360. That's the educational fair. It was fantastic. But one thing I noticed, I, this is the second time I've been. There are more. Um, there were more stalls for coding, um, artificial intelligence. So now that is the language of. It's not the, the future anymore. The century. The language of the, the now. now. Wow. So we need to put, make sure that we're learning. And you know, usually when we hear about coding, we're thinking how to put our kids. But there are lots of. Um, information about how you can also get to start, you know, as know what is happening. Yes, as a parent, mm. know what, because that's what is going to happen in the very near future. So I just feel that we should try and go for these fairs more often. We'll learn a lot, Which is, especially parents who are yeah. looking to send their kids off to secondary school yeah. too. There's so many schools there. You yeah. can find out what they're offering and it will work. We should find a way to put it in our public schools as well. Yeah. Those yeah. children are the ones who are going to be left behind in no mm. time if we don't do something yeah. about it. Well, it's, it's being worked yeah. on. It's it was really fun. Yeah. The kids yeah. were just saying, they were talking about it all the way through. <laughs> they had fun. Yeah. So I'm so glad. I saw glad. pictures. You know, yeah. Actually, I was home doing nothing. If I had, if I had, oh. I had got to remind her, I'd have actually You'd have gone. Yeah. I just told you you were going to be in school, yeah. so you I called Miami in the yeah. morning and said, I'll yeah. come and pick you. I mentioned that I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I didn't have school this Saturday. Oh, so we didn't I, know. I would have actually, because I was doing, I was literally on my and bed. The kids, would have the had kids had fun. Oh. They did so many things. They did some sign projects. They did ah. uh, some, some fixing building a building, some bricks and something. You know, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Oh, my son said he's Thomas Edison. I said, Oh, you look like he had his goggles. So I said, You look like Isaac Newton. He says, yeah. No, mommy, Thomas Edison. Yeah. He said, <laughs> light bulb. Imagine. Oh, no vex. Cool. Nice. All right, let's go on a break now. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the news. People stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, we're going to start with the nation. Power project. Probe of 1.68 billion naira cash to firm begins. How Odua diverted airport funds by EFCC. How Boko Haram affiliate, affiliate group ISIS leader was killed. Trump says he was a coward. People kills mate in Lagos calls war. Border closure will affect <clears throat> Lagos trade fair. And Supreme Court to hear articles appeal on Wednesday. Okay, let's start with Stella Odua. What's that about? Yes, Stella Odua was the former minister for aviation between 2012 
and 2014. 14, mm -hmm. And EFCC investigation unveiled that within that period, she was she diverted 22 billion naira mm. specifically into that was meant for buying equipment to secure the airports, and she diverted this money into getting license and equipment for a broadcast station called Crystal Television, and she got a um, a quarry a quarry that's where you dredge um, stones and all of that, mm -hmm. and she bought equipment for those things. So EFCC was able to trace how the money was diverted using account officers in the banks mm. and how the money was sent to buy those equipment. So now they've gotten, they've uh, taken it to court that they want to confiscate those equipment. Okay. Why, are you, why are we like this? This woman got into politics to serve and she got a position to serve and she diverted the funds to buy things for herself. This, this is even an embarrassment to women. We've been saying that we, are, we do not participate enough in politics well, and then you get an opportunity. Alleged, 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 guilty yeah. as charged, if let's not even assume she's alleged. Right. Okay, okay, that's about the people that... Um, a 16-year-old boy, Adewale Ayuba, has been arrested. Just a musician. He's 16, yeah. Has been arrested by the officials of the Lagos State Neighborhood Safety Corps for allegedly stabbing his mate during a cult war. So two secondary schools had a cult clash mm. and he decided to stab the other one in the chest and ran away. Oh, so 16. the boy he stabbed is dead, but he's been fished out by the police and handed over oh, for sad. proper investigations. Oh, uh, it's sad. really sad that yeah. this so, is going on. The major Here headline, uh, I know that um, Amcon is raising dust. The Gov EFCC to investigate why Nigeria paid 1.6 the um, billionaire to a company that's actually owing us 121 billionaire. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But Hi. that's what, okay. let's move on to um, the punch. Which story you want to take? Yeah, POS. You know the stamp yeah. duties on POS transactions? Yes. So, um, we, so it has started, of course. So, people, if you go to filling stations, especially supermarkets, when you do your POS transactions, those, that money will be taken off. So it's no longer the merchants that take that cost. It's now individuals. Individual. But they're also explaining that there's a, an account that this money goes to. Mm. So okay, that's what to the punch. Somewhere. Why are you smiling? Payroll yes, system <laughs> controversy. I'm not excited. Asu takes um, battle to the National Assembly, meets Lawan and Gbaja. Uh, man kills daughter during dispute with wife. Power tenants tackle Inspector General's wives over eviction notice. Nigeria's ex-Prime Minister's wife, Jumai, dies in Lagos. Victims write Oyakilome over funds in crashed bank. By also commissioner, fathers of doctors seize five million naira ransom uh, messenger. We don't monitor salt and rice sharing, says Einek. Supreme Court hears six appeals on Atiku's case on Wednesday. My Beno intervention for peace, not politics, says Onyema. And again, Buhari heads for Saudi with four governors and ministers. Picture here of horse riders during the cancer awareness campaign in Abuja, saying cancel cancer. All right, which story are we taking? The human interest yes, of a very sad story of a man who was fighting with his wife on Saturday about 6 p.m. And in anger, he picks up his one-year-old daughter and he smashes her against the um, floor. Hey. And she dies instantly. I mean, it was such a gruesome way in which she, she died. Um, the police were called because, he, of course, immediately there was like a mob action um, anger. On, yes, on him. People wanted to, they lynched him. Do you understand? Until the police came and sort of saved him. I mean, what sort of anger does we it take to take, to take your child, your one-year-old child, and slam her against oh, the wall? We need so to take sad. anger management seriously. Yeah. It's a serious menace yeah. in the society. Right. It's totally not correct. Correct. We need to take it seriously. The major you headline, suicide. Asu, who has a story? I Please do, but so we have them everywhere. Oh, that's that's story. We, we, we'll get story. we don't ahead. have the power story. In any yeah, go ahead. Yes, so on Friday, tenants of um, occupying the Police Officers' Wives Association's uh, complex in Phase 2, Ikeja, protested about the um, alleged decision of the IGP's wife, Fatima Adamu, to demolish the complex. According to her, she wants to build um, um, an ultra-modern shopping complex. Now, this would displace about 3,000 uh, oh, uh, tenants oh. in that place. So they have... Uh, written to the commander several times. They've gone to Abuja to have a meeting, but then they are giving them just three months to vacate that building. So they decided to do the protest to see how people can come to their aid and see what okay. they can do. And if they're talking about it, that's yeah. good. Major headline, Asu. So yeah. Asu is just saying they're going back and forth with government again on this IPPIS issue. They're saying that the university has autonomy, that <coughs> the way universities are built across the world, they take care of you know, their business. They are not involved with government's bureaucratic ways of doing things. Gov and then they're also complaining that um, the scheme only recognizes 
um, employers up until age 60. And we have lecturers who stay on to do this job much you know, longer than that. But government is saying that you know, we have met you guys at so many different points. Like, this is a conversation issue. What they're saying is if government says by 31st October, if you are not on the scheme, they would not make payments to, to the staff. As we're saying that if you don't pay us, we will not work. So, so, so they're going to go on right and threaten us as usual. For me, this is I, I, I didn't see any merit to ASU's agreement because the IPPS is a fantastic way to curb corruption within the payment system of Nigeria. It's yeah. supposed to reduce ghost workers and all exactly. of that. So what they are complaining about, about university autonomy, can only happen where the university is actually paying itself. Mm. But the universities are paid by the government. So you conform with the rules of the government. On this one, I don't agree with ASU. They should find their way to okay. uh, integrate with the payment system. Moving on to Daily Sun, Pastor Bakari attacks Sinumbu. Anambra 2021, APGA can't intimidate us, says PDP. ASU threatens strike over federal government assistance on IPPIS. National Assembly de uh, determined to bring change, says Lawan. Exit of 189 companies on settles capital market. Okay, who has the Lawan story? Yes, I do. So the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, I got it right, <laughs> <laughs> said the National Assembly is working to bring change to uh, the citizens, saying that um, they are not, they, are, they know that they are from different political parties, but they are, they are putting that aside as they want to work together as a team. They are working tirelessly to make sure that the 2020 budget is ready so that from January it will start running mm. instead of what we have from May, half right. year. Yeah. And so everybody should put their hands together, forget about what political party you belong to. We are going to work We're as a team. We are waiting to yeah, see so that from major, major headline. headline. Right. Um, Pastor Tudeba Kari speaking at Lateran Church mentioned the fact that. Um, the issues of lack of good infrastructure happening in the country is because of the um, stolen funds that are uh, the politicians stealing stolen funds and inferred body loan, which is the code name people tend to use to refer to former governor of Lagos State, which is why the headline carried it. But it didn't mention any politician's name. Mm -hmm. It just inferred that uh, politicians stealing from the money from the country, politicians that have stolen from the country, will give account for what they've done, and that's all. Okay. Moving on to the Nigerian Tribune, Buhari versus Atiku, Supreme Court to hear 66 grounds of appeal on October 30th. EFCC budgets 228.8 million on 2020 to fence 101 hectares of land. Mm. Serap, right finance minister, demands details of, de of the failed CCTV projects. How PDP will win Bayelsa Gubapo, says Dixon. Adeboye, to hold special prayers for lecturers and students as regards sex for marks. IPBIS federal government testing and resolve, says Asu. Balewa's last surviving wife, Jumai, dies in Lagos at mm. 85. And border closure may affect Lagos Strait versus LCCI. So they're obviously saying that the, the, the fact that they've closed the borders may affect visitors from the, from the West Coast from um, coming into Lagos yeah. for the fair. Yeah. And um, that might actually affect the turnout. They of, said it over and over again that they did not close fair. borders to people coming in. They did not close borders to legitimate businesses trading with Nigeria. They closed borders against smugglers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay, well, wow, we'll come to that. I think we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll, so we'll talk, talk about, about it. We'll talk about it. So um, I took sex for Mark. So yeah. um, the GEO is saying that he's calling for a prayer. I took the story because I really wanted to see what sort of prayer it will be. But it's actually for falling lecturers. Okay. So yeah. there will be a lot of lecturers. There will be students. Also, especially because he used to be a lecturer before he became mm -hmm. a pastor. So is it well. falling reverend that will come for that? that so, yes. 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 No, no, yes, because they is mentioned that two senior lecturers who are already in this uh, yes. problem are going to be I there. think it's good. So, we, there, there must be a form of bringing people back into society because we just cast people out to the fold. and we never allow them go through restitution. So, yeah, no, let them go to the court. <laughs> let them, yes, be, let them go what through we need that. To do. Once they then we'll pray for them. You, no, once they've been fully, um, they followed the rule of law mm -hmm. and they've been punished for their crime, there must okay. be a way to bring them back, back. integrate them into the society. The video of the late... We have to move on to daily... Oh, so I'm next to because I know you wanted to take that story. Yes, yeah, she died. Uh, the widow of the late uh, Prime Minister Tapawa Balewa died um, yesterday at 85. She just uh, came back from India where she had a heart uh, disease that had been going on for a couple of years. But the daughter said um, they will be taking her to mm. about you today for the burial. Mm. So our hearts go out to them. To the family. Okay, daily trust one insecurity persists in Nigeria by experts. Uh, 2020 budget defense ends today, says Senate, Senate in insists. CJN laments growing criminality among students. And panel members are known as Supreme Court fixes articles appeal against Buhari on, for Wednesday. So we, the major headline is a story we should take as a let's talk later, but just to give it in brief, there, we, according to what the Daily Trust has unveiled, the army 
the police are heavily short-staffed to fight the issues around. Mm -hmm. Our police officers, we have less than four, we have about 400,000 police men securing our over 200 million, million. which is giving you like one police to 500 people, it can't work. Mm. The uh, military men, we have 150,000. Considering the number of crises that we're fighting around the country, we still, well, we don't have enough hands. So mm -hmm. let's even leave funds Let's talk about the personnel issues. So if they, they broke down the comparison between other African countries. But the real issue I want us to highlight here is that there are interagencies not working together. So even between DSS yes. and the police, they're not working together. There's a, they, they gave an recognize each other. Yes, they, they gave an insight that there was a, um, an attack that could have been prevented in RAN. And that it didn't happen because they didn't inform the army on, on ground. Some, some people had information that they didn't tell people on ground because they wanted to be the one to carry out the rescue. At the end of the day, sync. they're not working together. Yeah. So we need to integrate because with the issue of insecurity in Nigeria is so cumbersome that if and they so work complex. together. Mariah, even the case of helicopters, the military is trying to buy helicopters when we have Air Force that they have helicopters. So why are they not? They can't do they are different. No, yeah, they're, they're they're they, they, they have this, they have the one they can use. According to what For I'm the reading fights. here, yes, they have the ones For that can be used the fighter jets they have but the um, the air force the wants army to use it and the army wants to use their own let's work together please okay that's all we can take on front pages when we come back so many topics especially that the land border closure is a major issue uh, we'll discuss issue of gambling but first our hot topic is going to be on uh, Minister for Finance. Was yes, Minister of Finance. Saying Sorry, that the health. Minister health. Health. For health. Minister of Health budgeting a certain amount of money to bring back Nigerians' <laughs> health That's workers. Right. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Recently, a health minister, the health minister, Osage Ehaniri, said that Nigeria would employ the services of medical experts from Europe and America. This is due to the migration of health workers from the country. However, the minister has reiterated his statement saying that he's, the initiative is not about recruitment of people, but about volunteers willing to uh, visit Nigeria for limited periods without pay. Now, what are your thoughts on this? Is this the right way to go about this? Um, this is the right approach. You can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. Okay, so this issue of health workers being Nigerian health workers, obviously, Nigerians. In diaspora. Living in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. um, inviting them home to come and share knowledge, pretty much. <laughs> so and it's budgeting about over 200 and something million era for this. 234. So what are your thoughts on it? Do you, do you think it's a good idea? Mm. So, um, obviously, I don't think it is a good idea. You don't think it's a good idea? I definitely don't think it's okay. a good idea. That's, that's pretty obvious to everybody that reads it because um, I, I read a quote um, yesterday that a leader is someone who identifies a problem before it becomes an emergency and mm. deals so with it. Post, yeah. So, what we have is a group of leaders that will see problems and they will do nothing until it becomes an emergency mm. before dealing with it. Mm. We saw Nigerians yeah, migrating yeah. out and we didn't deal with it, no. and now we have a shortfall in our, he in our health sector, and we're trying to combat this with volunteers. Mm. Volunteers that is going to cost us 234 million Join. naira is not a right approach. Because I've engaged a lot of, uh, we've, we brought in a psychiatrist here, and she was saying it that she's a psychiatrist, she was well-spoken, well-learned, and she's running her own private practice. She would like to contribute her quota to mm -hmm. development in Nigeria, but she's not employed. And I asked her, have you tried getting employed into our psychiatric homes and all of that? She said, she has tried. It hasn't worked. So we are not mm. recruiting the doctors on ground. We mm. are exporting the doctors that are good. Mm. And we're now expending more money. Mariah, it's so complex. It doesn't make sense. Why can't we simplify this when thing? I, when I read this article, I just thought the idea was to come in and share knowledge. I don't know. Bring volunteers, Nigerians who are doing, because we always say, oh, Nigerians are doing so well abroad. Uh. We're saying we're opening our gates to Bring, come home and share knowledge. Are you seeing that as a problem? Mariah, Mariah, the, the, the problem we have as a country is that we like to solve problems from in isolation, so to speak. So you are not in tune with the problem you have, but you are thinking in your head and fantasizing the solution you feel 
will work when you have not put yourself to see if this solution will work for this problem. Fixing a square hole in a round peg, it can work. A square peg in a round hole, that can work. The problem of our healthcare system is the fact that we are short staffed, that's number one. Mm -hmm. We have one doctor to 200 patients, which makes them overworked most of the time that's one of the reasons that they want to travel outside. Remuneration is terrible. They are not compensated adequately for the work and their skills that they put into that department. They are not. We have a problem with her uh, uh, NHIS, which is not working, it's not functioning. Mm. We, we have a problem of infrastructure. Sometimes you go to most of these um, uh, medical hospitals, the uh, government medical hospitals, and you don't see equipment that are needed for the job. So they have to, um, what's it called? They have to improvise where they don't have have an oxygen something, they use a nylon. You know, it's, it's terrible. These are the problems that we need to be solved in the healthcare. Not getting people to come and teach us. Our doctors, medical doctors here, are well trained. We they know what more. to do. We they don't more. just have the enabling environment to, 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 to do it. And we need more. I have to come to you, Mira, because mm. I've heard, we've had guests here also. Mm. They want to come to Nigeria, but they don't have that enabling environment. They don't have, they, they, they feel like the government has not put things in place to to, uh, to attract Define them home. Define an enabling finally, environment. Finally now, the minister is saying, okay, let me budget X amount of millions to attract these people. And, and, and Nigerians are saying it's not the right approach. I'm, I'm still confused. Mariam, your thoughts on this? Okay, so first of all, I know of um, organizations like Hospital for Humanity that come to Nigeria and they take out, they do um, um, open heart surgeries for children mm -hmm. at a much subsidized rate. They mm -hmm. come with their equipment, they come with their manpower, they come with and then they come and train. I know this um, personally because my mom is a nurse and every time they do come and work with the Josh University Teaching Hospital and I confirm that this is not a government affiliated initiative. These are, and, these, and they are not the only ones. Every year you have them come, um, they've done, um, there's another group that does ear surgeries and have been able to help a lot of people who were once deaf to hear properly right now. Mm -hmm. So people are already doing this without government support, yeah. without government funds and we should encourage that. But I understand the uh, position that um, um, you're taking, Obiajulu, which is we do have a problem, but our funds should not go into what these NGOs are already doing. doing. Because even in, his, um, in the report, he was saying, he, he, it was reported that he said, uh, hospitals are well equipped. We need to just make Nigerians more aware of how equipped our, um, our federal hospitals are. So I'm a bit concerned that it seems our Minister for Health is unaware of the problems that we are dealing with mm -hmm. in our health sector. Mm -hmm. Sir, our hospitals are not well equipped. At all. Uh, when people go to hospital, a lot of th times you hear there's no oxygen, there's nothing they can do about that. Our hospitals are short staffed, sir. A lot of them have left for different countries. <laughs> and him. what we need is for us to properly, and one of their problems, the reason why they have left is because they say they have not been properly uh, remunerated. Yes. So we need to look into that. I, I really, I so would like to believe, issues, Mariam, yeah. that our, our government is not totally saying they're oblivious on all the problems. Ah, no. I don't yeah. want to believe, I, 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 although, yeah. let me finish. The, the I also don't want to believe that the only intervention for the health sector is to bring back the Nigerian doctors. I really doubt that. Okay. I really, I like to believe that they have plans to invest in um, acquiring equipment to properly equip our, our hospitals. However, I also don't want us to be oblivious to the importance of bringing Nigerians who are experts abroad oh, to also come. Because the truth is that many already, of them want to come They do that. They do that. NGOs right now, are doing that. for humanities in Acquire. But it would be nice for the government always... to also have some kind no, of no, 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 no. to bring them home. No. Do you know, why, Please, it's not, do you know why, why it's not good for federal government right now? Right. Right now, because of what we have on ground, the problems that we have on ground, mm -hmm. until you deal with these issues, whatever else you do will be so insignificant, it would not make much of a difference. So I hear you I saying over wait, and over again. Got, wait, let me, come, let me take this call and I'll come to you. Okay. Good morning, are you there? Hmm? Hello? Hello, good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. My, my name is Gordon. I'm calling from Abuja. Go ahead, so, please. Um, I'm, a, I'm a medical doctor. So, um, you hit the nail on the head, basically. People have said all the problems you have. I think, so, I think the problem is um, our leaders, this full part, you know, the, if you study chemistry, you basically, I want to use chemi uh, chemistry terms to describe the problem they have. The magnitude of s um, speaking out of term is inversely proportional to the distance between they and political positions. So, I mean, our leaders, the last um, minister and this present one, you can see what they've said. Mm. And I think, you know, there has to be a change, basically, in terms of leadership, 
as well as the political culture, because some of these leaders that we spring for, but they, you may be a fantastic doctor, but that doesn't mean that you'll be a fantastic leader. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank, thank you. you. God bless. So, so um, there's obviously a huge disconnect and lack of information, and we don't need to, I don't need to imagine there's a lack of information. From what he has said, is, it makes it obvious that there's lack of, there's a, there's a gap. There's a gap. So I gave birth to all my children in general hospitals. So I am, I've experienced a Lagos general hospital where they even Which get the more best, funds. Though. And I can say categorically that there are many issues that are in need of urgent attention. The least of our problem is to bring in doctors from diaspora. So we have enough capacity, human capacity, um, human beings here to fill in the health sector. What we need is the- no, we don't, talk okay. we, do we have doctors, they are looking for employment, no, Moran, no We have doctors and nurses seeking employment in general hospitals, and they've not gotten the no, jobs yet. Yes. So can we first recruit those ones and fill the problem first? And I think that it will start by our, doc our, our minister doing a, on, on plan for visits to hospitals to properly ascertain the because I think that we sugarcoat when we hear the minister is coming, people quickly arrange everywhere. So the Stop minister arranging. isn't seeing the right picture, he's not experiencing what is really on ground. When they experience it, they would understand what we need most importantly now mm -hmm. is that enabling environment for the doctors mm -hmm. on ground yes. so that we don't lose who we the, are. The, the, the minister will mm -hmm. not be able to, uh, will not. Um, the gap will always be there. He won't be able to fill it because he doesn't use the hospitals. Mm. Why, do you, why do you say that? He does not use the hospitals. How do you know? He does not use they the have hospitals. a budget for traveling. They, 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 have, they, travel they have a budget. For their medical, their health care. Uh -uh. He doesn't use the hospitals, so he won't fill it. Now, you want to bring uh, medical doctors from the diaspora to come and work in an environment that is not enabling for anybody. How do you think they will last? They won't. They will stay for a time and they will run away. Secondly, even if they last, you are spending so much amount of money, 234 million, to make sure that they are here, they are comfortable. Who will end up assessing uh, 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 that? that uh, no, not the, even the return. The, the, the citizens that will end up accessing it are those citizens who can pay for. Wait, no, what you see, the, there have, will be the high have, class citizens who are listen, still not listen, working listen. for have, the common man at the end of the day. We have doctors without borders. We have them, they were here, they help us out in those I remote to, areas. Yeah. They, we're not the ones paying them. Yes. Yes. We know that they're funded by their government. Yes. The point I'm trying to make no, is are that. They? Some, sometimes they're not. Sometimes yeah, they're not. But the point our minister made critically was that he's looking for volunteers. So they are well established doctors in the diaspora. Okay. Why do you would like to come and... There are a lot of them already okay. in Nigeria. Why do you need to spend so much money on volunteers? volunteers? People who are already willing to do this. People who are already doing this. People who are doing this in... in, in even in, despite how tough it is to do it, they're already doing that. My and the reason that they're doing... And the, reason, can't see, well, and, they, and the reason that these people are doing their voluntary and doing that is because they already... On, they see that we have a, a lack of yes. these doctors, this equipment, this sort of um, treatment. That is why they're here. Exactly. So what you need to do for them, for, for these volunteers that they see, what they're asking is that the government should make sure that these equipment are here. Are here. These doctors are here. The training Your are doctors here. doctors are paid Not well. to bring them to do what they're already the doing. The of Nigeria in diaspora... Okay. Good morning, madam. Are you there? Mrs. Akim Abike yeah, Dabiri Yerewa. Good to have you on the show this morning. Thank you. You wanted to say a few things on this? Okay. Go ahead. You're live. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'm so glad that I, I'm actually supposed to board a flight, but you know, I don't miss your view, so I changed so I'm so glad I tuned in. Thank you. There's a total disconnect. You no, that is not the information at all. Mm -hmm. So I need to straighten things here. Okay. And I'm sure the minister did not put it. The, when I saw a headline in one of the papers, and uh, I, saw, I read it online while we're in, in Sochi, I'm like, no, 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 this couldn't be the case. We've been on this for about for over a year now. All doctors abroad. We are, as I speak with you, there's a, there's a, there's a, an AGM going on. Mansag in the UK, they're called Medical Association of Nigerians in the mm. UK. Mm. We have Mansag, we have Ampa in America, we have Campad in Canada, mm. we have uh, all in Africa too. Mm. Now, all, we, they, they, well, as I said, diaspora and later chairman uh, diaspora committee, there's a diaspora desk in the Ministry of Health. So we'll be working together to see how best we can make the best use of our doctors in the diaspora. We keep saying we are the best in the world. If we are the best in the world, it's a shame that the state of Medicare is the way it is in Nigeria. So we started working with the doctors to say, what can we do? Yes, you come on medical mission, like my sister talked about the hospital in the uh, Aqua 
There's so much of the just come and go. So how can we have a structure that makes it possible for doctors who want to come on their own to say, okay, I'm on three months sabbatical, I'm a professional in uh, cardiothoracic or whatever, yeah. I can give my services. Period. And we're actually at the stage of crossing the teeth and dotting the eyes. I don't know about 234 million naira in the... Oh, that's uh, what the paper said. Job. No, and that's why I'm saying that there must be an error somewhere. Okay. Now, there's a budget in the ministry for things they also do abroad, I think, with a doctor. So that needs to be strengthened. And I'm sure by the time we, come to the, we talk to the Committee on Diaspora and introduce the whole program, this issue of our money will be, will be um, corrected. So I just want to say from the onset, before people start, start calling, and um, making some whatever, let's get it right. The program is called the Diaspora Professional Healthcare Initiative. Right. And it's involved, and it, let me give you an example. One is, I'm not a doctor, you are not. We don't want a situation where quacks will come in. So you walk through the associations, for instance, in America, ANPA, Association of Nigerian Physicians in America, and it's not, it's not just doctors, all medical practitioners. Not, as I speak, we do about 150 have registered. Okay. They're just waiting for the program to be launched. Let me pause, you, their let me pause you for a quick second, madam. I have two mm -hmm. questions from you. Yes. So I wanted to ask, b before she even came on, that um, I think that the first stage should be the framework for individuals to volunteer. That's what and I'm, I'm telling you. And I'm happy as you I'm are on. With you. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to finish. As I speak with you, they are meeting in the UK. I couldn't be there because, as you know, we just got back from Russia. As I speak with you, their the meeting is going on. We'll introduce the framework to you, and you're going to get to know everything. We haven't even read that thing before we start talking about money. So, but, but, but Matt, there is a budget for for the, no, the, the budget was it was in the papers. The There's a budget in the 2020. Don't believe everything you read in the papers, please. Uh. And, and before, you take, before the, you take a topic, don't take it this one and head that in the paper. The, so I'm the, telling you that we're going to introduce, we're going to, you know, stress. I don't even know what is in the budget. If it is, you have the parliament to ask questions and say, what, what is that for? But I'm telling you, a program will be on for a year and a half. In London now, they are holding a meeting. The doctors from America, from Canada, from the UK are all holding a meeting now. Ma, you are the only work. one that seems to be very responsive. We've tried several times to reach out to other ministers. Even a report came out yesterday saying that the um, press secretaries are not responsive. So we can't have information in papers that is wrong, and we don't have the ability to confirmed. get the right the information. When you heard the answer, I think you should have asked me. Okay. When you heard that, it's about the answer. I think you should have asked me, and I will. I know the minister is new. And I don't think yeah. it was quoted in the right context. Okay. What I want to assure you is that nobody is paying anything to import foreign medical doctors. Nigerian doctors in diaspora are not foreign. They are Nigerians. Right. In fact, let me tell you the beauty of this program. They are so excited about coming home and giving right. back. Right. There's a doctor Just one in Canada. Quick, one, quick, one last question. Yes, so, yes. Emma, but I would like you to also confirm for us, because the minister was defending the uh, diaspora part of the 2020 budget where he now made all of these statements. So I would like you sometime to call in and tell us if there's a budget in the 2020 for the diaspora-related uh, medical issues. I, I, know, I know there should be a budget from the ministry to take off. It's not something government can even sustain. It's not something government will run. Uh -huh. But there, there, there's probably a budget to take off. Whether it's that amount or not that amount, I don't know. I'm not in the ministry of health, but right. I'm also going to be in the Committee on Diaspora. Okay. And okay. it's something we'll discuss. If I'm there's concerned. something ridiculous, they will cut it. All right. You need a take off grant. Yeah. Thank you so off. much. It's something that will fund itself. It's something that, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be more like a voluntary itself. service. So like something like that. Does. Thank you so much. We have to let you go now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying this. I really appreciate you calling on the show. All right, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, Oh, lots of other stories. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Another corner or neighborhood you turn to across the country there's a gaming center, lottery, betting, and game for money. It's so much on the rise right now. Report has it that more Nigerians are taken to gambling, as shown by both government statistics and reality on the streets. We have with us the CEO of Lagos State Lotteries Board, Mr. Bashir Abiola Are. He'll be telling us on what the government is doing to check the excesses of this fast-growing addiction amongst young people. You can join the conversation on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet towards our TVC connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. 
Good morning. Good to have you on the show, sir. <laughs> yeah, likewise. So gaming, obviously, um, young people have obviously engaged in this um, activity for so long. And I remember that um, there was a period that it seemed that this sector was not properly regulated at some point. And even when the regulation came, it seemed as though the, the government still wasn't getting what it should from these gaming companies. But in recent times, we've even seen the proliferation of so many of them. Suddenly, there's every day in every single corner. What happened? What caused this? And um, how are you managing and regulating their activities? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, the lottery board in Lagos State was enacted in 2004. And one of the reasons is to control what you just mentioned. And there are a lot of operators in the market operating legally without license. Wow. So we were established to regulate, promote, and protect. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're doing right now in partnership with the Lagos State House of Assembly is called responsible game, gaming. Mm -hmm. What is that is to control the underage gaming and to control illegal operators. And aside from that, we also have to know uh, that gaming or lottery is not new. Mm. And uh, as far back as 20 BC, when the barbarian attacked a uh, Chinese authority then, they had to raise a lottery in order to find finance for their defense. And one of the greatest wonders of today, uh, modern day, is uh, the Great Wall of China. It was uh, constructed with the lottery money. Mm -hmm. Princeton, University of Columbia, and University of Pennsylvania, they were financed initially through lottery. So there are so many good aspects of lottery than <laughs> uh, the negative aspect that we focus let on. Me, let me take you, and I, I like, I'll come to you ladies. Thank you for taking us history, because I have a bit of that history also. Yeah. And I know that a country that is serious, we're talking every day, we don't have money. Mm. This is a huge industry that you can get loose cash almost mm. immediately. Definitely. Mm. Now, many countries, what they did, what they began, they owned the lottery companies. And then they, they, now, had to, they, had, they now had agents who are collecting and they get a huge percentage of that. We don't have that here. Private owners own these companies. And, and even what the, the percentage that goes to government is, is not as much. So my question to you, therefore, is knowing the history that many countries, many, many, the, the foundational money they got was from the lottery. What is your government or what is your agency doing to ensure that you have higher stakes in the revenue collected from the people on this, on this? We do have higher stakes. Uh, the issue How much with is higher, sir? What's the percentage? percentage? Percentage in terms of what comes to the government? Yes, yes sir. Uh, it's appro approximately between 10 to 20 percent. But the issue is, we have to understand this is a free market. Uh, 200 years, 400 years is different from now. Mm. Even I was a uh, state lottery agent around 1996 in the state of Maryland in the US. Then you have an uh, agent and government was running it. But today, they are in partnership with the private sectors. So the government, it, it, it only makes sense for government to allow private sector with control. Mm. And majorly, the revenue that comes from it, even in Lagos State, 80% of the, that revenue that we make goes back to good cause. Hmm. So Sir, the good cause me, that we want ask. to be specific about. Yeah, okay, let me you see, because for the China bridge, for the China wall, they could see specifically that this is what was done with it. Mm -hmm. I, I, what, do, is it the, the funds from the lottery and the gaming, does it go straight into the government coffers, the general account, or do we have any specific project, project that is being funded by this? Let people can know that, okay, this is a fund from, and it is funding health, it's funding education, it's funding this. Based on uh, the current regulation in Lagos State right now, we have <coughs> some fund that goes into infrastructure, mm. we have some that goes into education, then other goes into sport, mm -hmm. and the rest goes into social development. But this are these things in the open? Mm -hmm. Do you, yes, is anyone who can have the information it, it, that it actually gets into the industry? Just definitely, oh, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> let me you up on that. Lagos State is very, very, very hidden. They, they, the, the level, to get information from Lagos State concerning how the budget is being run is almost impossible. And there are many publications out, the out there that they've probed the Lagos State to release the budget mm -hmm. and how they spend money, and we don't get they any don't answer. Show us. So, uh, no, let, I cannot let, let you just take it, say that. Let, let, me, let, me <laughs> let me tell you something. Before I get into government, mm. whatever information I want, we just need to write 
and request for it officially. Mm. We should re um, minimize the way we protest against government. Mm. Critique government. Yeah, or critique government. So find a way to get it through official means. Mm. Today, when, I, uh, when you go to the state assembly, mm. you can officially request for, the, for any law mm. or for any budget that has been passed. Mm. And if, it's, you know, if you request in that manner, you'll get it. Sir, okay, let's go back to the so um, I'm worried about the addictive nature of gaming, or what you call gaming. But I, I see it as gambling, okay? Because we've had people who have stolen to put into gambling. We have people who have sold their properties, used their children's school fees to put into this. So it's not something I'm going to sit here and glamorize, glamorize for anybody. But you talked about responsible gaming. Okay, I want to know how do you control, how do you ensure that the people coming in to do the gaming are those who, are, who have the funds for themselves, that they have not stolen the money? How do you ensure that they are actually adults who have passed, do you get to see like the ID card or something to show that they have, they have something that has given them that money they are putting into that bed? How do you really control that responsibility? What do you mean by responsible gaming? Gaming. Okay. Um, I'll give you certain examples. But to go straight to your question, the first thing that we're doing right now is to make sure that underage are not playing the game. And that is by enforcing uh, the... Um, by enforcing strict enforcement and, and oversight of the operators. Mm. And one of the things we have put in place, you know, when you go to liquor store in some other client, it's written black and white that do not sell to underage. Mm. So randomly we go and stake as a, as a regulator. Mm -hmm. We send youth to go and stake. Mm. And, and see if and they are allowed. Yeah. Good. So if that happens, then there's a way we penalize Who them. Who is being penalized? Right. Okay. The are operators. We the general can one or the small one? Depending on who is the co or corporate is. Okay. Okay. How do you handle the addictiveness? Right. Say that again. The addiction. addictions. The addiction. You know, we have to be very careful with addiction. Mm. Some of us are even addicted to your view. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just sit down to mellow. No, 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 no. On a serious <laughs> note, but the issue is that um, even when you stake mm. in the stock market, mm. you can be addicted to it. Mm. Mm. Uh, trading on forex, mm. you can be addictive. It can be addictive. So uh, we just have to find a balance. Moderacy. Yes. <laughs> right. exactly. yes. Thank you. Exactly. So I understand your. You came up for a reason. The reason why we have this board is because you had already seen problems that had to be addressed. Yes. And from one of the problems, I wonder if you are able to address is can someone be over. Can someone be gamed out or over game? Do you understand? Like when you go in to a bar and you drink too much, they may not give you any more liquor because mm. it may cause you to have an accident if you go home. So can someone come to his regular betting um, place and then he'll be said, I'm sorry, you can't bet because you have over bet and it may be affecting your pocket or affecting something. Does Is there your board have that we're, we're um, we're responsibility? Trying to, we're trying to do that now through technology. Oh, okay. So. Uh, because most of the gaming right now is through electronic media. Yes. So some of the things that we have done in the mobile money sector is to control certain transactions. Mm -hmm. So if you are playing and repetitively the system realizes that you are betting too much, mm. uh, you can control uh, your, your play. Uh, your play. Mm -hmm. So maybe an interval of two, three, four hours, or maybe even days, mm -hmm. depending on... Right. Uh, but it's a new thing that we're trying yes. to put in place now. I have now. three questions for you. Let me try to <laughs> put them together. First is how are you handling underage voters? Is there any mechanism you've put in place to ensure only those who are 18 and above, is it 21 and above, I'm not sure, are allowed to bet? One, one of the things that we're doing right now, and you see uh, the effect of it in the next one year, is to register agents that sells lottery tickets. How come they are not What have you? It's, this is an infant industry in Nigeria. It's just right. growing. Wow. So, and it, it, not even all the states in Nigeria are, are regulated right now. So what are the agencies doing to ensure that they're on the We register who, who, those, those who, who sell okay. lottery tickets mm -hmm. or betting. Uh, so we know who state. they are. So yes. Know, okay. yeah. Now, one of my major worries in this industry is the stupendous wealth <laughs> that owners of these lotteries have. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. 
one person has this much funds. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the new kids on the block recently sponsored a reality show that I know is extremely important, extremely expensive to be a sponsor of that reality show. But they are doing it, they have money. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know why government is not looking at this money enough because this is loose cash that people are having. So I still believe it's not loose. that says so much more, there's so much, there are better ways you can actually ensure a huge amount of that money comes to the government coffers, not private 10%, individuals. 20%, 20%. That's 20% is way too small, sir. Ah. Uh, you know, it is easier for you to say 20% is way too small. But who takes the money 80%? The owner. The owner of the business. But, 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 but that's what you're saying now. There are some operators yes. mm. that have lost more than 2 billion naira. Can you mm. give us an idea of how much? When, when, sorry, let me let Nigerians understand. Give us an idea. When you bet today, mm -hmm. give us a framework. How much comes into the, to the operator? How, how much do we bet what, daily? What's the, the daily? The bet, what are the numbers? Okay. Based on what yes. I found with um, Price Water, okay. they said on a daily basis about three billion naira hey. all over the country. But one thing you have to you have to understand, you know, you have to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a small amount of money. Small. Three the, billion is small. Hold, Actually, hold on, on, on a daily basis. Yes, hold, hold, so. hold on, hold on. Please do three times 20, 31 <laughs> this yeah, calculating. Malta, mm -hmm. with a population of less than five hundred thousand. Yeah. <clears throat> Contributed the gaming sector contributed one billion dollars. How much does Vegas alone do? No, Vegas is too much. Uh -huh. Let, let's talk about Ve uh, Malta. <laughs> That's just like an, like Lagos Island. Mm. So, but you don't even know the investment mm. the operator put in initially. Right. Mm. Okay. You, because it's not. To. It's not a small. It's not a risk-free business. It's exactly. not a risk-free no, no, no. business, you have to invest in a whole lot. and it, it, it costs a lot of money to put so, yeah, okay. security right, so in place. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So they have to make up their money back. Okay. So I'm going to be like your enemy on this table. It's Let's okay. look at it from the moral angle. Somebody is losing money, no and another money. person is a business winning money. Ah. Yes. No, now you take your money, no, 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 go no, 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 It's voluntary. You're not losing. Somebody will lose when you win, and I know that most people who have played That's these like, games who have, they, they've lost more than they have won. And that is the reason these, uh, uh, the owners of the business are making so much money. Yeah. Because if you actually win back to back, they won't make as much. So looking at it from a moral perspective, is this something you would encourage that we keep going into? I don't think you should claim that the operators are making so much money. You just mentioned billions, huh? When billions does not mean you have overhead. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have, you know, you have running costs. Okay. Advert alone is huge. I know you guys are in digital media. So yes. it's, it's huge. So it may seem, the, the gross sale may seem to you as big money. But when it comes down to it, it's... I can ask one. Okay, so I have this call. Okay. Can I come to? Good morning, Chima. Are you still there? Hello. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Hello, good morning. Morning. Yeah, um, I, I appreciate most things that you guys are doing there. I'm a first time caller. Welcome to the show. Right, you know, uh, good morning. Um, I just want to, let me say something here. Uh, I do not support a society where government throws their weight, you know, to create to create a, a, a regulatory for gambling. Do you know something? Do you know how many youths that ought to be uh, uh, to be an apprenticeship? You know, if you go to both of our mechanic workshops now, you won't find any youth learning work, carpentry, electrical, all that. All of them have chose a part of being playing gambling every day. Is what every day. Is I, I, as a person, I'm not a graduate. As a matter of fact, I'm a top secondary school holder. But yet, I can tell you that I have graduates working for me. Simple because. What? At that time, for there was nothing like gambling. Mm. So I will want a situation where government will focus an emphasis to people. Be, I mean, let like government even create a regulatory body for apprenticeship, mm. a, 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 a regulatory body for, for, for gambling. Do we really have a regulatory body for apprenticeship where youths can be more popular? Okay, thank okay. you very much for your views on this. Let's okay, take a I have, tweet, I have one question. This is personal because I know of someone really close to me. It's while he was a student, he used to gamble away his money. 
so that he can get more money. I want to know if the regulatory board has something to make sure that students are not gambling away their school fees. Yes, so. and was the money. Was saying yes. 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 But now I want to give it a like people touch. Or not. Because because know. Know. People will gamble. No, we know, but there's a regulatory board. It came on board for a reason. Right. Because it has recognized that there are some problems mm. and it wants to address those problems. So that's what I'm asking. Um, what I will say again, uh, this issue is not uh, uh, only <laughs> unique to Nigeria. Right. And you can hardly control what people do. Exactly. You can hardly control. When I, when I was in school, I, I play with, working part-time. I, uh, I play with lottery. stock market. Mm. Not lottery. I, I do. I play lottery too. You know, it's a game of chance. Yeah. Okay, know, if, we have if, if, if we decide to run uh, a pro bono, I mean a lottery a draw, raffle draw now, that, you know, you can stick 1,000 naira and with possibility of winning Prado. Mm. Would you Everybody not do it? Everybody would do it. Let me give you, let's say it's for your Asha Olu, okay, okay. Asha Olu um, Ayolu says, people see gambling as a form of entertainment. Don't bet more that you can afford to lose. Know and accept the odds. Thank you. Uh, he says, gambling, a moment for silence, of silence for the poor victims and ruined families. Poor victims. I mark myself safe from this one. See, Muraya, at the end of the day, gambling is a voluntary thing. Mm. People walk into those gaming, like gaming in stores. People, people, it's like, and, and the idea, the, the, what, is, what their body is doing is to make money from it, not to regulate it. So mm. I think that our show, we can use this platform to warn people that, oh, guys, please don't Stay gamble away. Have to run future. Up. Have to run and all of that, but well, it's I have to ask you this final people, question. So. I had three questions before. My final question. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell us, and tell Nigerians, I know because there's a calculation mm. to know that per stake, mm. the probability of you that, winning, of you winning is slim. Mm. A lot of people don't know that. They don't know. So I know that I, I think I read, I can't remember the figures, but it was like a 0.0% .0 or something like that yes. of you winning. So the fact that you think that everything you stake, that there's a probability, is pretty, pretty, pretty slim. Those is that correct? Those you can't lose. Tell us those figures. I want you, do you have the figures I, with I, you? I can't give you the figure. Because business. I don't have it here. Okay. okay. But everything we do as human beings, as reasonable individuals, we have to take calculated risk. Yeah. When you are leaving your house in the morning, you, when you are driving, yeah, you have skin to, you're, you're, So, no, no, I'm... It, yeah, yeah, I'm you're right. I but, 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 <laughs> what is most, but, but what is most important right now, we're trying to bring sanity into the market. Yeah. Okay. Like, mo worldwide, mm. when you... Most people that win, they lose the money along yeah. the line. Yeah. Mm. But the issue now is that, you know, like in the U.S., they will give you an option. Do you want... If you win 100 million now, they will ask you, do you want upfront, mm. which down. with penalty, or... Uh, annuity. So those are the things that we want to bring into Intuition. play. That you can, yeah. even when you win, you can invest the money. Right. One way or the other. So, yeah. good. But if it's let loose, we won't like it. You know, it happens in New York during the time right. of the mafias. So we have okay. to regulate, yeah. bring some sanity. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing the initiatives of the commission with us. And we are going to be monitoring you because <laughs> there are children are obviously getting addicted to this yeah. um, act, act. Okay, we're going to go on a break now. When we return, we discuss the effect of border closure. Everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yobi hasn't talked about it. Stay mm -hmm. with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Two months ago, Nigeria put restrictions on the cross-border trade with its neighbors. The move has also met with lots of mixed reactions from different countries, Beni especially, Bene actually. This has broken the newly agreement of, to scrap restrictions on trade amongst African economies. Joining us on the show is an agro-business expert and public analyst, Ulua Daun Sola Taiwo. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You can call us on 0708-0668-014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. All right, so since the border closure, everybody obviously is screaming, especially our neighbors. And uh, although farmers are happy internally, they're happy about the closure. I think they're killing but, us. Well, some of them are happy. Yeah. Well, we're hearing reports. Yeah. But the issue we're having is the fact that we're breaking that long-term relationship we, have, we, we share with our neighbors. In your view, was this the right approach to stop smuggling into the country? All right. Well, 
the matter of um, border closure is um, what I call the dilemma of, um, of the century for Nigeria. Because here is Nigeria trying to save our economy, at the same time trying to be the big brother to other smaller nations. We don't want to. Uh, let me give you these uh, figures and facts, and you will understand why this is a big dilemma. In 2015, Nigeria had an economic decline. And then 2016, the Nigerian economy contracted further 1.6%. And um, between then and now, uh, foreign, uh, direct foreign investment has plunked by 55%. And Nigeria has been struggling with um, uh, foreign exchange. Now, um, in 2017, Nigeria came up with a, an economic recovery and growth plan. And um, the major, one of the major ingredients of that plan is to increase investment in agriculture uh, so that um, agriculture can contribute f better to the national um, earnings. Yeah. Uh, at, as of today, agriculture contributes um, about 5%. And we're looking to improve that to around 8.5% by 2020. And um, incidentally, rice is one of the major components of um, what Nigeria uh, consumes. Uh, as of um, today, Nigeria consumes as much as 6.7 uh, uh, million tons of rice. And we produce just about 3.7 million tons. Nigeria, yes, Nigeria spent as much as $22 billion on food, food imports mm. every year. That's whooping. Huge. No country can prosper like that. under such circumstance. And here we are trying to diversify. And the unfortunate thing here is um, the importation thing wouldn't have been so, um, uh, wouldn't have been so, so bad. It, uh, but it's then complicated by smuggling. Mm -hmm. And um, that, of course, uh, does two things to the Nigerian economy. Let me, let me ask the question of the fact that we understand, and obviously, as I said, Nigerians are happy generally about the closure. Mm? But well, a lot of people believe that Nigerians <laughs> are happy about the closure because <laughs> it helps us to develop our own economy better. However, people are also worried about how Nigeria went about it. Yeah, that's, I'll get, I'm getting to that okay. shortly. Yes, uh, definitely, uh, of course, uh, our African neighbors are not happy mm -hmm. because Benin, for example, depend on Nigeria very heavily yeah. for generating national revenue as well as um, earnings. Uh, but the unfortunate thing is that um, uh, Benin has uh, refused, let me permit me to use the term refused, to help the situation by helping Nigeria control the issue of, of smuggling. Mm. And um, that's why the federal government came down hard on Benin. Because apart from improving the security situation at the border, we eventually had to shut the border. OK, sir. Let me hold you there. Uh, because I know that, um, according to research, there are ports, that's the Benin ports, take just about 5 to 20% tariff on imported goods. In Nigeria, we take 70% on imported goods, you know? And so somebody cannot work for how many years and save up like one million naira to buy a car and then decide to pay 70% on that one million naira. It's not going to work. And that's why they resort to smuggling. So shouldn't we as a government be looking at reducing the import tax? make it very small for them to import. But then when they now come at the point of registration, you increase the consumption tax. That's what they do all over the world, especially in the UAE. And it works. So it brings in more money. You have not lost money at your ports. You are making more money from your consumption tax. Shouldn't that have been? Because I don't think Bene will be the one to help you to organize yourself. They are organized <laughs> where they are. Mm -hmm. They are capitalizing on how disorganized we are. Well, take advantage, yes. Of course. Clearly, Nigeria also has a uh, fault with respect to some of these things, especially on two grounds. Number one, with respect to our, um, uh, the way we tax 
uh, goods yeah. and then Tariff. the tariffs. And then the second thing is with respect to our national production system. Uh, well, um, Nigeria should have started this um, effort to increase national productivity with respect to rice and some of the most important uh, cons uh, things we consume mm -hmm. at least 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do is achieve what would require like five to 10 years within five to 10 months. Mm. And that's why it's, it's hard on our African neighbors mm -hmm. because as it is, they are not prepared. Mm -hmm. we, even we are not, not prepared. prepared. So I don't know, do we know specifically what government's short-term plan is. I understand the first thing to do is, okay, we close up everywhere so that we'll stop, in order to stop um, smuggling, we're also stopping proper legitimate importation. But I understand why you may need to do that first. But how long does the, will this closure be for? What is government's plan? Do we know what government's plan is for the short-term and for the long-term? All right. Well, for the short-term, uh, well, the major essence of this uh, policy is to first get our African neighbors to listen and cooperate with respect to helping with border uh, security. Mm -hmm. Now, um, presently, the stance of Nigeria is when they feel the, 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 the pain that we are feeling, we come to the table mm -hmm. and agree on working together to ensure that it costs Nigeria much less to undo border security. Mm -hmm. So, well, it's not like there's a specific date on right. this, mm -hmm. but there's a specific action. Okay, right. so um, a yes. few things to clarify. People keep saying that it is affecting our trade treaties with um, the countries, but the trade treaty, the, the treaty we have is not for their imported goods to enter our country. Let me just put that out because our trade is that whatever is generated within West Africa can be brought into West, other African, West African countries. That's our ECOWAS. But what we've been seeing are imported goods from these countries coming in here like it is a free trade zone. And, and last year there was a report that the Be um, Republic became one of the, the highest importer of rice, of rice mm -hmm. a kind of rice that they don't consume don't at all. Mm -hmm. So it was coming in here. So this, this is a good move in terms of um, shrinking their economy to respond to what is going on there. However, why are um, farmers complaining? My coconut oil seller is complaining that she brings the coconut from she usually buys coconut from Bene because the species they have there produces more oil than the one in Nigeria. And so if the goods, is this border closure affecting goods produced within West African countries also? Are you as a farmer able to export your goods to other African countries without having to face any problem? I don't understand that. Is, is that a problem right okay, now? Okay, good. Well, for the, there are, it's a two-way problem, really. And as a matter of fact, Nigeria itself is having to make sacrifice to get this to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, for goods that we need to import from other African nations, like the coconut uh, you talked about, mm -hmm. well, at the moment, that's a problem. It's not being ported. Uh, of yeah, course. Well, sorry to cut you off. I thought what the government had said was that they've, what they did was close the land borders, not the actual seaports. So mm -hmm. can't we get these countries to bring in items so we'll that they can see. properly um, document what comes into the country. So the land borders are there, but there are other avenues of getting into the country. So the, the coconut person that wants to import, the, uh, the company that produces the coconut in, in whatever country can find a way to get it to Nigeria through the seaport. Is that correct? OK, yeah, but the problem here, just like she said earlier, is that the Nigerian port operation is anything but efficient. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, making that as, uh, that an alternative mm. is extremely expensive mm. for most. Uh, How about exports, please, quickly? Uh, exports. Ex um, Nigerian uh, well, farmers exporting goods that well, usually export goods into Benin and into like Ghana. What the, is, is there a problem with that? Too? Okay. Well, the 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 thing here is that Nigeria has a market that is large enough to take whatever we can whatever produce. Producing. So so basically, Nigeria is not um, is not is not the victim here. When it comes to pushing goods out, mm. yes. yes, really, really, yes. Because so, mm, I find it a bit hard to swallow. A lot of <laughs> things that have stopped coming in, Nigerians are complaining they can't get them. I mean, even we are talking about rice. We understand why rice has to be stopped because uh, it's being smuggled. 
but a lot of people right now in Nigeria will tell you that the rice that they are buying is much more expensive mm. or maybe not of the sort of same quality that they are what used he was saying. To. What he's, what he's what saying he... is that, I asked him, are we exporting food into other countries? No, he's he saying that what we have, it. yeah, what he's saying is that we have enough to take care of us. No, we no, have no, enough no, to no, that wasn't what he said. We have that wasn't what he said. Mm. We, we, can, we cannot even produce enough to so meet our demand, talk less of uh, okay. export. Okay. So even so those who export, that. those who export are basically usually looking for uh, higher um, earnings mm -hmm. in many cases, yeah. but in the real sense, considering so rice, we have enough ma the market is so what, what, so what the government is trying to tell us is that whatever you produce, try you to sell the within. market. Exactly, you have the market. However, exactly. our manufacturing is mm. also very low. So, for example, I I I, I get maybe groundnuts or get uh, what's that one that we have in the north? Um, mm. Is it cashew? Yeah. yeah. Right now. How do we ensure that we manufacture this properly such that we can even still can sell consume. with it? I know cashew is not an example because obviously cashew is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But there are the raw materials we get within the country. And yes, the market is there. But our manufacturing sector is very, is actually moribund. Somebody so is saying the northern borders ensure, are not closed. Are they? Sorry? Somebody we is know saying Niger that Niger is closed. So yeah. let, me, let me get this question through first. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, sir, is how do we ensure, are we, is government also ensuring that we're we are developing our manufacturing mm. sector mm. to be able to produce and convert our more raw materials to products that Nigerians can actually purchase. Mm. All right. Now, two things. Well, I'll uh, narrow it down to the agribusiness industry now. We, as a company, my company, we produce rice too. Mm. And then, of course, uh, when this border closure thing happened, one of the problems we have faced is getting enough paddy. So even paddy? rice paddy is the raw material mm. to produce okay. rice. Okay. And so we had to start a project we call Niger Rice Project yeah. in order to fill that gap. Now, um, not only is Nigeria having issues with uh, manufacturing capacity, we also have issues with producing the raw materials. That's why I said earlier that these are things we should have put in place at least five years before now. But then, in any case, the real uh, reason for this new jack is the, uh, the recent um, document that Nigeria, Nigeria signed. That's the uh, uh, African Continent uh, trade, uh, Free Trade uh, uh, Agreement. Uh, Nigeria suddenly realized that we were going to be losers. Oh, after we mentioned this thing. Yes. Yes. Because in the real sense, we have a population of almost 200 million. And we're not producing. And we are not producing. So everybody would be bringing everything they have into Nigeria. we have cocoa now. Our chocolates are still imported. So basically, the essence of this quick uh, intervention yeah. mm. is to create a situation where we'll Nigerians forced are forced to produce mm. okay. and so like, uh, thing, uh, right? until we as a nation mm. get to the point where everybody comes together to say mm. let's address this Nigeria, uh, Nigeria, must, work. Nigeria must work yes. we must produce what we need mm. and Except we this is begin to do that, then there's oh, going to be a, a, a problem in the long run. So that May goes back to the fact that Nigeria, we, we, we didn't think this through. Mm. Exactly. Obviously, we didn't think this through. But we have a short period of time. In this short period of time, what do you think we can do to bring about self that we are able to produce or, or do better while this is closed? Would you say like a five-year? Yeah. Would you say like a five-year time is enough? for Nigerians to be able to put their act together. Because it's not only about the farmers as well. It's also about the policies mm -hmm. around it. Because I feel that one of the major reasons we have smugglers and what we have is not about just being a republic. Mm -mm. It's really about, I believe, corruption yeah, so of our officials along those borders. That's number one. So if you have closed it, does that really solve the problem of those Oops. officials not being in, you know, doing illegitimate business or maybe trying, you know, find ways to still allow smuggling in right. some way? You know, so even if the farmers are producing, does it still solve the problem of our borders okay. and our officials and the policies? Okay, the, the, the real, the best way to solve this problem is to allow market forces mm. to help okay. with this situation. Okay. And to do that, you have to put systems in place where Nigeria can produce competitively. Okay. If we have all the... Um, the structures, mm. good road, power, uh, financing, yes, yes, and all of that. And we can produce at the price w uh, at which nations like Indonesia and co-produce rice, for example. Even 
for those who want to bring it in, it becomes unattractive okay. mm. because so we are able to exactly it, right. it becomes more expensive, expensive for them to That's bring what it they in. Do everywhere so, exactly. The world. So, so security would more. even be secondary. Yeah. Let's take a at, okay. under that So um, the 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 imports was banned for import and export banned for the land borders, and they decided to open the sea and mm -hmm. the air as well. But then, according to Guardian, I think about uh, a, f a few weeks ago, but I think last week, they realized that the scanning machines are not even working properly at the seaport. So how do you intend to scan properly? They've been using manual as against what they wanted to stop uh, at the land borders. So it's back to the sea. We do not have machines that are working. So how do you now regulate the goods that are coming in through the sea? It's not a government official. OK, well, <laughs> well, definitely that, uh, uh, that's something you can you can talk about from now. I know the minister like, of finance uh, actually uh, talked about that. Let's uh, yeah. Yeah. But it says, I support federal government on land border closure. In Benin Republic and other neighboring, neighboring countries don't produce rice. All they do is import rice from Thailand in large quantity, collect so duty on them, and then smuggle it into Nigeria without paying a dime. Asha Alou says, um, Rafael. Should I read? Yeah, Rafael please. says, government keeps saying they are closing border to encourage lo local production. How come the primary source of revenue of the government petroleum is still largely imported? Mm. They should also ban importation of petroleum products. <laughs> that should be nice. Mm. <laughs> that's, what do you think? that's one particular very uh, niggling issue. Okay. Um, now, let me put it this way. Sometimes it actually, I find it as a horror that Nigeria is still having to import refined uh, petroleum products. Yeah, yeah. Turn around maintenance. Uh, we, 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 can, we can, no, it's not even about uh, turn around maintenance. We can actually go by uh, modul, mo, uh, modular refineries, yeah. mm. uh, uh, spread out the means of. That's a topic for another day. I'm oh, okay, well. I'm chocolate to eat. But I, I agree, <laughs> modular refineries would definitely help out. Uh, the I mean, they're done, they're being done illegally right now, but I know that, it, yeah, the DP actually went to inspect mm. and said that we're going to support them, but unfortunately, oh, we don't know how much. Has been done. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, sir, for coming. I think Thanks you actually coming. helped enlighten yeah. us more on this topic. Thank you. That's all we can take on today's show. See you again tomorrow. Have a fabulous day. Bye bye.